Welcome to this week's painting project. Just like every week we will be using the M3 method of painting to compose the picture, block in the colors and add details to complete a painting. This is a photograph which I clicked near Mulshi and I will be using this as my reference photo for today's painting. So I am going to choose a canvas in this shape, a rectangle and I'm going to use elements from this to compose a picture. Obviously, I see that there is a lot of area here which doesn't add any value to the painting, but this will be my focal area. So I'm going to have this big tree here as the focal point and here will be the base of the mountain. And instead of having these two hills, I'll be having just one mountain like this in the background. And I'll have this fence and its shadow. And as the light is coming in from this side, this part of this bush and the tree will be in shadow. And that will cast a shadow like this. I can show the unevenness or slope in the foreground by changing the shape of this shadow. If I show it completely straight, then it will suggest that this land here is very plain whereas if I have some undulations in that it will suggest that the land is having some kind of uh, unevenness and that's what I want to do. So there will be another bush here maybe I will add it maybe I will not add it but this will be something which I will decide while painting. And instead of these two, I have made it into one mountain shape, but then I will add a few bushes here towards the base of the mountain, something like this. So this will be my compositional sketch for this painting. Obviously, this will be slightly darker than the foreground. So, this is step number one. Step number two will be blocking, and step number three will be details. So, this one is composition. So that's what we have done now. So see you in the step number two where we block in. Uh, this time we will be using watercolors, but I'll be also using white in watercolor and use the colors like gouache and uh, not like very transparent watercolors. Welcome to step number two in which we'll first draw the outline of the major shapes here on this paper and then we'll start painting in or blocking in. So I'm using watercolor as I mentioned in the previous uh, lecture and this is cobalt blue, this is uh, chrome yellow, this is burnt sienna and this is titanium white. I'll be using only these colors and I'll be mostly using this flat brush. It's number 12 and a small brush, round brush if I need to add in few details. So let's start with first laying in the outline. So I'm using some of the cobalt blue and I'll first indicate this line. Mm 
this is the line of the pathway and there will be these posts here and this big tree will be here then there will be some leaves here and the mountain will be something like this and few bushes here and there something like this now let me start by this even though this is uh, watercolor and i'll be using it as uh, gouache which means I'll be adding white to make uh, some parts of the painting opaque. I still uh, recommend that you start painting from lighter colors towards darker colors and from background towards foreground. So we'll be doing sky first and for that I'm mixing this cobalt blue with a lot of water and as we always say the sky is darker at the top and gets lighter towards the horizon so i'll be using very fast brush strokes to lay in this color and i'll thin out the color as we come towards the base or towards the horizon Maybe I can add some darker blue here towards the top of the painting. I have not leaned this uh, paper against something like this which will make it slightly flow down better or the colors will flow down better. So I think I need to do that. And I'll add something like this here. So this is better. So now let's come to the mountain first. So in the mountain, I'm going to have, uh, I don't intend to make this very smooth. Hence I'm applying it. I applied it so roughly. We might have to change the value of this color once we lay in some trees or suggest some trees on the mountain in the background but let's wait for that. And now comes the I think the darkest part which is the tree. So let me mix a color. blue and burnt sienna and I'll start laying in that and the tree will have its base here somewhere And for the tree trunk, I'll be using this round brush and I'll mix a dark color and I'll try to draw the tree trunk.
and the leaves on that will again I'll have to do with this brush first the tree uh, the leaves on this side will be slightly darker so I'm using a darker green and let me see how this goes I'm roughly creating this tree like or leaf like structure as I go towards the right I'm going to add more yellow to it to suggest the light which is falling on those leaves because the light is coming in from this side I am using a thick color and that is why it is creating these uh, dry brush kind of marks. And I think I can go slightly more darker this side. So I will mix a darker color again. So this completes the blocking stage of this painting which in which we have covered the complete paper with some kind of color and then in the third stage we will add more details to this. So see you in the next lecture. So welcome back to this stage. This is the stage 3 or step 3 of uh, M3 method of painting in which we will be adding details to this landscape. And this is where sometimes we feel frustrated or unhappy about the painting which we are making. But the because at this stage the painting does not look quite nice. But then the whole point is to go through all these steps and then decide whether you like the painting or not. And uh, remember that each painting is a uh, Remember that each painting gives you practice and the resulting painting is not only is Remember that each painting gives you practice and that's one of the major outputs of this exercise and uh, a successful painting is not always the only output which you need or get from any painting exercise. So let's begin adding details to this painting. I'll start again with the mountain and for that on the mountain I need to add some areas of trees. So I'll have some color which is something like this which we used here but I'll make it even more lighter so I'm adding white and I'll also add some blue so that it becomes more bluish and let's try this color on this this looks okay to me let's see how this works on this is too blue I guess so I need to add slight brown let's see how this works yes this looks better than the earlier color and I want to indicate that this is some kind of 
tree cover on this mountain. So I'm going to make sure that it creates shapes like this. Let me do this with bigger brush. The bigger brush creates much more looser strokes or more free strokes than small brush and then it gives that painterly character to the art or the painting which you are making. So it's always better to use a larger brush than a smaller one. So I am slightly varying the color as I come towards the bottom of the mountain. You can see it's become slightly more bluish and darker in value. And I want to show a path here. So I'm going to mix a brown, light brown color and let's test it here. Looks good. I don't want it to be overly contrasty. This is a mud road, so it will not have any sharp or definite or straight line edges. Let's make it slightly more lighter in color. In some places at least. Like this. Just to get rid of the monotony of the flat land here, I'm brushing in some color. And I want to show some darker posts here. So I'm mixing again a dark. And let's see how this looks. The posts will be taller on this side and as we go towards the tree they look smaller and smaller and I also I am not drawing them parallel to each other because each one will have its own angle of standing and each one also will cast a shadow. The shadow also will be in this direction, just like this tree has. So that's what you have to remember. And I'm also not drawing these shadows in a straight line because that will suggest a very smooth surfaced road, which is which it is not. And let me suggest some barbed wire in between them.
and let me see if I can or how it looks if I add some highlights to this mountain here somewhere at some places. Yes, this looks good. This also brings the feel of it being a very sunny time. But I'll add it sparingly and not all over. That's enough, I guess. And maybe there is some small grass here, which is just to break this area into smaller and some interest to this area, some variation in the color. So I am dragging my brush like dry brush, nothing too fancy. I think that's it. Let me add one more dot of color here. And I think I'm happy with the sketch. So let's remove the tape and see how it looks. I always love this part of the painting process. And here goes the last tape. And that's it. Just to summarize what we did in today's uh, painting is we started with a photograph and then we composed this as part of first step of M3 method of painting. Then we blocked in the colors, main colors of each area and then we added details to finish the painting. And we have used watercolors like gouache in opaque manner by adding white. So I hope you enjoyed this painting and you will also make an attempt to paint uh, using the same photograph which I am attaching to this video and uh, you will make a painting based on that. So I will see you in the next video. So happy painting till then.